This is going to be an audio recording of Cinderella, which is an adapted fairy tale from or by Charles Perrault. Um, I'm just going to read the directions really quickly. Read the passage, choose the best answer for each sentence or question about the underlined word, then fill in the circle next to your answer. You guys know we're not going to do that because we're going to take this test on the computer. Um, however, I did want to read this whole thing to you so that you have an audio recording of the story uh, in your file. Okay, here we go. Here's some story time. Get some snacks. We're starting out. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy couple with a wonderful young daughter. Sadly, the girl's mother died. After several years had elapsed, her father remarried. His second wife was a widow with two daughters. All three women were proud, selfish, and mean-spirited. The gentleman's own daughter had a sweet disposition. Since the girl's charming personality made her stepsisters appear even more vulgar, her stepmother despised despised her, despised me. She really, really hated her. She put her to work as a household slave, scrubbing pots and tending the fire. Her father would have intervened, but he too died soon after his remarriage. In the evenings, the poor girl would sit in the chimney corner upon the cinders, so her unkind stepsisters dubbed her Cinderella. Since her mother had taught her to be clean and tidy, Cinderella's slovenly appearance humiliated her. This made it doubly excruciating to be called by the diversive nickname. Now, a diversive nickname is like a mean nickname, meant to bring you down. All right. One day, the king announced a birthday ball for his son. All members of the social elite received invitations. For weeks, Cinderella's stepsisters talked of nothing but gowns and hairstyles. When Cinderella timidly, that means really shyly, asked whether she was invited, her stepmother sneered that it would be unseemly to bring a dirty, ragged girl to the palace. As the family set off for the ball in their finest clothes, Cinderella fe felt a pang of loneliness and despair. As she sat, sat weeping, she heard a melodious voice. Melodious means uh, like music. The voice was like music. Well, my dear, isn't it time you were off to the ball? There stood a radiant old woman, Cinderella's fairy godmother. The talented fairy quickly transformed a pumpkin into a luxurious, that means like full of luxury, coach. Six gray mice into a dapple gray horse, a fat white rat into a jolly old coachman, and six slithering lizards into footmen in fine clothes. Our preparations are complete, the fairy godmother announced. Poor Cinderella stared down at her rags. She spoke in a tremulous voice, holding back tears. Dear Fairy Godmother, I'm not ungrateful, but I can't go clad in this ragged dress. Oh, of course not, laughed the Fairy Godmother. She touched the girl lightly with her wand, instantly transforming her rags into shimmering gold and a silver gown. Oops, shimmering gold and silver gown. I, did, I read that one wrong. I'm sorry. On the girl's feet were sparkling glass slippers. As Cinderella set off, her fairy godmother cautioned her to leave the palace before midnight. At the stroke of twelve, her coach would become pumpkin once more. Her horses and servants would change back into rodents and reptiles, and her gown would melt into rags. At the ball, the prince fell in love with Cinderella at first sight. They never really want to trust that, but all right, I guess it's a fairy tale. All evening, he would dance with no one else. Cinderella had such a wonderful time that she forgot to watch the clock. She was eating supper with the prince when she heard the clock begin to strike twelve. Fleeing down the palace steps, she accidentally stepped out of one of her glass slippers. On the last stroke of midnight, her waiting coach disappeared. There was a large orange pumpkin surrounded by a little group of mice, lizards, and one fat rat, fat white rat. 
In rags, once again, the girl ran home in the dark. All she had as a memento of the enchanted evening was the remaining glass slipper. Months later, the family heard a fanfare of trumpets and a, large, a loud knock at the door. The prince and his servants were going from house to house, searching for the owner of the glass slipper. Each stepsister tried to wedge her foot, her huge foot, into a tiny shoe, but to no avail. Finally, the servant noticed Cinderella and persuaded her to try the shoe on. Her dainty foot slipped easily into the slipper. Shyly, Cinderella took from her pocket the slipper's mate and slipped it on her other foot. At last, cried the prince, embracing her. Cinderella and the prince were married and lived happily ever after. The new princess treated her stepmother and stepsisters far better than they deserved by inviting them to the palace once a year for tea. All right, this is the reading for the midterm test one for lessons one through 10 of Worldly Wise. I hope you enjoyed this rendition. Uh, have a great day and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Bye.